Hey, it's Clay. Hope you guys are doing well. I wanted to do a little bit of a video today talking about amp modding. And uh, first we're going to talk about how to safely discharge the capacitors in a tube amp. Uh, discharging the capacitors is essential. Anytime you're going to open up the inside of a tube amp, they do have potentially dangerous or even lethal voltages in there. And so this is the process by which you can make them safe and then make the modifications. So um, first things first is you want to take your amp out of its chassis so that you can actually look and at it and see what's going on on the inside. Okay, so now we've got the amp out of its chassis, and you can see this is the inside of this Epiphone Valve Junior. Um, now, first and foremost, I think maybe one of the best ways to describe or te teach you guys how to do this safely is to talk about what not to do, or to explain exactly what would be most dangerous, um, just so you can understand exactly what's going on. So, uh, the idea is that you do not want to put your body into the circuit. Um, and so the worst thing that you could do is, like, let's just say, I don't know, I'll just use these two tools as an example. Let's say that this is the positive end of the circuit and this is the negative end of the circuit. Think about it like a battery, maybe on a car, if you have the positive end, the plus, the red, and then the negative end, the minus, the black, amplifiers work the same way. Um, <clears throat> just that they get power from the wall. But, so the worst thing that you could do is to have one hand on the positive end and one hand on the negative end. And then what that will happen is the positive signal will go all the way through your body and then if you'll notice between your two arms to make a signal it has to travel through your chest which is where your heart is. And so you're basically almost like defibrillating you know like on Gray's Anatomy charge with the paddles. Um, you're doing that to your heart which is really bad. You don't want to electrocute your heart. So that's what you want to avoid. So, the number one thing that you need to do is to discharge the voltage from the capacitor. So we're talking about these big guys here. Every amp has uh, these filter capacitors in the power section. And they are capable of containing voltages even after, so like right now the amp is not plugged in. The power cord is right here. The amp is not connected to the wall. It's not on. However, it can still store voltages that are dangerous um, in those capacitors. So you need to discharge the voltage from those. Um, secondly, just to understand some basic things about conducting electricity, um, you know, it, you can take some, some precautions. So one of the things that you can do that I've read is, is if you put one hand behind your back and then use your other hand while you're kind of poking around in here. Um, so that way, even if this, this hand would accidentally touch something that is hot, then you would not complete the circuit and it would, you, would, you would get, probably get shocked, but it wouldn't complete the circuit through your heart. Um, you don't want to do that, so discharge it properly, but that's just a second layer of protection. And then a third layer would be to, you know, get some sort of maybe gloves that that um, just that do not def complete an electronic circuit, whether it's like rubber or something like that, um, wood. So, again, I really do not have any sort of professional understanding of electronics, so if you don't feel comfortable with this, please um, don't experiment with this. I'm just trying to give you guys some of a basic understanding of what I have learned in order to enable to you to experiment with some tube amps. So if you, if you feel like you don't understand, please consult other sources. 
So with that in mind, uh, let's start talking about how to actually discharge the amp. Um, I do it with this simple tool that I made. This It looks pretty um, home brew, but it, it gets the job done. So what it is, is these are two alligator clips right here. Um, I got them from Radio Shack. And then what I did is I cut the... Or I think when I got them, they were just clips. And so I soldered a wire, one wire from each end. And then in the middle, actually, is a resistor. It really doesn't exactly matter what kind or what value of resistor you have. Just so long that you put a resistor. I think it's like a 10K. I don't even exactly remember. But what that does is the resistor will cause... So what you want to do is you want to put one end into the positive end of the circuit. And then the other end you want to clip onto the chassis, which is the ground. So then you're going to bleed those lethal voltages into ground and therefore make it safe. And what the resistor does is it prevents all of the voltages from going straight at once. The resistor is kind of like a, like um, turn, closing a valve on a hose, which will slow the speed of water. So otherwise, you're just going to get one big gush, and sometimes that will result in a spark. You don't need to do it. It's not, I guess, it's not dangerous necessarily, but it just is kind of an extra precaution. Sometimes that spark can be a little disarming. So first thing that I will do is stick this negative end, the black, on the chassis. So the chassis is the ground of the entire circuit, and so it's a really good place um, to put it. Now on this other end I have a pencil, this is like a plastic pencil, taped on here. This is just another layer of protection because this is kind of homebrew and shoddy. If you really want to do it right, um, you could get a much more, or much more robust or reliable pointed end, um, but this will get the job done. And then I'm also going to pull up my digital multimeter. So <clears throat> what this will do, I'm going to put this on volts, is I actually think that this is smart to use your multimeter first. And this will actually tell you what the voltages are. Now, um, the last time I modded this Epiphone Valve Junior, it actually did not, it like self-discharged. And some amps will do that, while others won't. So this is just a way to, I guess, really tell what's going on. So, for example, if I take this 9-volt battery, set my multimeter to volts, put one end on one of the terminals and the other end on the other, it comes up at 8.1 volts. So I know that, that my multimeter is working and it's giving me voltage. Everything's good to go there. So then, um, if I set this up over here, so what you want to do is... Uh, First and foremost, take your black end and stick it onto the chassis. Like I said, it doesn't exactly matter where, as long as it's on the chassis somewhere. And then with the other end, you want to just kind of put this onto one of the, in somewhere in the circuit. So I'm testing different points, um, testing different resistors, different capacitors. I'm looking for any sort of voltage that could be in the circuit. And I'm not seeing anything. Everything's coming up at zero. So that's good. That means that uh, there's nothing to worry about there. And really what you want to be checking for is these big capacitors that are lined up right here. Every amp is a little bit different, so you kind of want to take that with a grain of salt, but um, that's really where you want to be checking. So you know, if you have your black end on ground and your red end, you know, all throughout the circuit, you can test with 100% certainty what the voltages on that certain part of the circuit. And if you don't see anything, then you, you know you're good to go. So I don't see any voltages. So I can go ahead and touch these components and I'm not getting shocked. Again, I'm just putting one of my hands behind my back just for safety purposes to double check, but uh, using the multimeter, I don't see any voltages. Um, and so then what you want to do is, if you did read voltages, if you did use your multimeter and you checked and you saw that there are voltages, then you use this tool to discharge them. So you could stick this on maybe uh, the legs of this capacitor. That'd be a good spot. You can use your multimeter now to, to watch the voltage bleed out. Um, you can, it might take maybe a minute or so. You can use this on all different parts of the circuit. 
to just double check any any of the components that you plan on changing out it might be a good idea to just put it on there just to really give yourself peace of mind that you have done everything you can to drain all the voltages out of this and then your amp will be safe to work on so I've, I've got my multimeter and I've checked there's no voltages running through I've used my tool to drain the voltages and now it is safe to go ahead and mod, the, mod this tube amp. So, if you have any questions, let me know down, low down in the comment section below. Again, this is you're talking about safety here more first and foremost. So if you don't feel like you really understand what's going on, um, do some more research. Get Maybe see if you can get somebody to show you what to do, somebody who is a professional in electronics. This is just kind of meant to um, help explain what I do to work on these tube amps. When I was learning, I had a really hard time finding any resources on this. Uh, just because I think people are really hesitant to give advice to someone across the internet that they could maybe misinterpret that would lead them and put them in danger. So I really just can't stress enough how important it is to uh, be safe and really make sure that you know what you're doing. Get the multimeter out, get your safety tool, take those precautions to really make sure that you don't get hurt. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts down below and I'll see you soon. Bye.